Sure. My name is Max, and today I'm going to be talking about the DA42 NG-6 landing gear system. This is not flight instruction, but I hope that this serves as a resource for people who are learning about this system and want to understand the practical application of when you would need to know these components. We're going to cover the landing gear in four chapters. First, we're going to have a review of hydraulic systems. Then we're going to talk about the pre-flight, mentioning why you should be looking at certain components and how they play into the whole system. Then we're going to review the hydraulic schematic to see actually how the hydraulic pressure moves around the aircraft to extend and retract the gear. And then finally, we'll cover emergencies. We've probably heard already that the DA-42 uses hydraulically powered landing gear. But what does that actually mean? Well, welcome back to Hydraulics 101. And there's two main components of hydraulics that we need to understand in order to look at the system in its entirety. The first is the actuator. And you might look at this and say, Max, this is just a cylinder. And you'd be right, it is just a cylinder, except instead of being like the cylinders in our engine that are powered by combustion, the hydraulic actuators are powered by hydraulic fluid going into either side of the actuator. So there's an extend port and a retract port, and the hydraulic fluid going into one of those sides pushes the actuator in a given direction. Now, how do we direct the fluid into either the extend port or the retract port? Well, that's where the solenoid comes into play. The solenoid is essentially an electric plunger that when given uh, power or energized, it drops the plunger down and redirects the flow of uh, hydraulic fluid to the ports that we need it to. Now, your pre-flight inspection is going to be the best opportunity to set yourself up for a safe flight. And you can actually see what we've already talked about. Each landing gear has a hydraulic actuator, which is visible in the gear well with the extend and retract ports. There are several items that we're looking at on the landing gear, and I want to talk about the switches first. The first switches I want to talk about are the squat switches. And squat switches are electrical switches on the aircraft landing gear uh, that signal when the weight of the aircraft is on its wheels. And on the DA-42, we have two squat switches, one on each of the mains, but they have different functions. So starting with the left-hand side, the left-hand squat switch prevents accidental gear retraction on the ground. And this is especially important because if this were to malfunction and we had the electric master on and we raised the gear, there's a risk of serious aircraft damage um, as the gear might try to retract uh, while on the ground. Now on the right side, there are several things the squat switch does. It derates the stall warning heat to 50% while on the ground. It disengages the glow plugs while in the air and then it activates the ECU test switch on the ground. So it doesn't let us do the ECU test in the air. Down by each main gear, the other switches we should check are the up limit and down limit switches, which indicate when the landing gear is fully retracted up or fully extended down. Now, when we move to the nose gear, we're gonna be looking for the same down limit switch as you can see here, and also the up limit switch, which is in the front of the gear well. But in addition to these two switches, we're also looking in the back of the gear the full pressure switch and the full pressure switch is what energizes the extend solenoid as we'll see in just a moment. Over down here we also want to check the brakes. The DA42 has hydraulically operated disc brakes that act on the main landing gear and the wheel brakes are individually operated by means of toe pedal. So we want to just make sure that there's no hydraulic fluid leaking and also the brakes look to be in good condition. This is also a great chance to check out the tire make sure there's no bald spots and there's sufficient tread. We want to inspect the tubular struts on the main gear. These use air oil dampers that compress quickly and extend slowly to help soften landings. The damper strut, which is the silver part, should be extended 4 centimeters or 1.6 inches on the mains. The nose gear also has an air oil damper, and if you have MAM42 659, which is a higher takeoff weight, it should be at least 12 centimeters or 4.7 inches. When the landing gear is extended, the downlock hooks engage, which is what you're seeing here. Springs maintain force on each downlock hook to keep it locked in the down position until it is released by hydraulic pressure. This is a good opportunity to look at the downlock hooks, make sure they're in good shape, and also check out the bearing shaft. Now let's talk about where the magic happens. In the rear of the aircraft, we have the hydraulic supply and control system, and there's several components in this. The first is the hydraulic reservoir, which is the supply for the hydraulic fluid we just discussed. Then we have the electric motor, and this motor powers the pump, which pressurizes the system. We're looking for between 1400 and 1650 PSI in terms of pressure, and the pressure switch helps monitor this and activates the pump if needed. We also have the relief valve, which is opened in case the system exceeds 2600 PSI. And the last component I want to talk about is the accumulator. So we don't want to have the pump activate all the time, and that's the point of the accumulator. The accumulator keeps some pressure to reduce pump cycling 
and ensure stabilized pressure. Now, hopping back inside the plane, before we start the engines, we'll turn the electric master on. And when you turn the electric master on, you're going to hear the hydraulic pump activate as it uh, restores pressure to the system. The important thing to note here is that it should only last up to 20 seconds, and if you hear it continuously come on, that could indicate that there's some trouble maintaining pressure in the system, and that's caused to terminate the flight and investigate. Now let's see what gear retraction looks like when we move the gear selector into the up position. If the electric master switch is on and the left main squat switch is relieved, meaning we're not on the ground, the landing gear pump will activate along with the retraction solenoid to move the hydraulic fluid to both sides of the gear actuators. Now you might be looking at this and saying, why are we sending hydraulic fluid to both sides of the actuators if we want it to retract? Well, it's a good question. And the reason is because we don't want to just jam all the hydraulic fluid and retract and have the gear slam up. But because the effective surface area of the retraction side of the piston is larger, it's going to push the actuator to the retract position. Once the landing gear starts to retract, the down limit switches will not be depressed, meaning the gear lights will uh, extinguish and the red unsafe light will illuminate. Now, once the nose wheel is retracted, things are gonna flip. The full pressure switch on the nose wheel will be depressed and this will energize the extension solenoid, allowing fluid on the extension side of the actuator to return to the reservoir. This is what the system looks like in flight, and it's important to point out the pressure pump switch, which operates the pump as necessary to maintain the system's pressure between 1400 and 1650 PSI. If there are no internal leaks in the system, then the hydraulic accumulator will maintain the pressure without needing to operate the hydraulic pump. Great, so now it's time to lower the gear. We're going to move the landing gear switch into the down position, and this is going to de-energize both the retract and extend solenoids which will allow the landing gear pump to move fluid from the retract side of the actuator to the extend side of the actuator and back to the hydraulic reservoir. Now, when the landing gear begins to extend, they're no longer gonna be touching that up limit switch, which means our red gear unsafe light will illuminate. And as the landing gear comes down, it's gonna be assisted by both gravity and springs until the down locks are engaged. Once they're down and locked, this will depress the limit switches, which means our gear lights will illuminate, and the gear pump is gonna to continue to run until the system pressure is sufficient what it looks like when you use the emergency gear extension handle. The process is pretty similar to the normal gear downflow, except the emergency extension valve is open. And this allows the hydraulic fluid to bypass the regulating valves. So when you pull that emergency gear extension lever, a micro switch will deactivate the landing gear hydraulic pump and gravity will naturally start to let the gear fall. Now, the open emergency extension valve lets the hydraulic fluid from the retract side of each actuator flow through the bypass valve and redirects it past the regulating valves back into the reservoir. Now, as the actuators move, fluid will be drawn into the extend side from the reservoir and tension springs will keep the gear fully extended and locked in place. Of course, once the down limit switches are pressed, the green landing lights will come on. But what is this fluid that we're actually moving around the hydraulic system? And the answer is Aeroshell Fluid 41 or AMG 10. The important thing to note here is that this fluid is actually dyed red for leak detection purposes. So if you're walking around the aircraft and you see red fluid, it's a good indicator that there's a hydraulic fluid leak somewhere. What about cast messages in the aircraft that relate to gear? Well, the first one and very important one is the check gear cast message. And this will appear uh, when either the flaps are in the landing position or one power lever is less than approximately 20% and the landing gear is not down and locked. Now, some aircraft have a gear warning mute button in the top left. Um, but either way, this is an indication that you're in a landing configuration and the gear is not down and locked. Take nothing else away from this video. It's how to handle an emergency with a landing gear, okay? And the gear system is designed to come down at the end of the day. So if it's not coming down, something has failed miserably. And the first thing we need to do is detect. That's what the landing gear unsafe warning light is for. And if we see that light stay on for more than 20 seconds, we know something's wrong because either in retraction or extension, that light should extinguish and we should have three green or no green at all. Now, if the landing gear unsafe light stays on, we should go to our checklist and it'll tell us what we already know. One of the gear is not fully up or fully down. And if the unsafe light's been on for over 20 seconds, we need to lower our airspeed to the maximum retraction airspeed, which is 152 knots indicated and then recycle the gear. Maybe if we bring it up and we bring it back down, um, this will fix the issue. But if it doesn't fix the issue, it's time to go to manual extension of the landing gear. 
So first we want to check the gear indicator lights, ensure they're actually working. We want to verify that the electric master is on, the bus voltage is in the normal range, and finally that the circuit breakers are all in and reset if necessary. We should be at our VLOR speed, 152 knots, and then we lower the gear and make sure the gear selector is down. This is important to be done first. Then we pull out the manual gear extension handle. Um, if we don't get all three green, but they're, um, some of them are green, uh, we can slow to 110 and use moderate yawing to make sure that the air pushes the gear into the locked position. Um, and then finally, we want to verify that we have those three green lights. Um, if the gear is not down and locked, we want to move to gear up landing. So that's a brief explainer on the DA42 NG-6 landing gear. Um, like all tutorials, if there are any updates or I've learned anything new, I will leave those updates in the description. Um, if you like this video or if it was helpful, leave a comment, let me know, and I will see you guys in the next one.